Welcome to Clued in Mystery. I'm Sarah. And I'm Brooke. And we both love mystery. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Sarah. I'm so excited to talk to you today about this really fun topic. Yeah, we're going to talk about locked room mysteries. I'm looking forward to this. All right. I will start us off with just a little background on locked room mystery and a sister trope, closed circle mystery. And I like to think about these two like sisters, those sisters that are so similar and related that they often get confused with one another. Uh, both of these mystery tropes have been around literally since the beginning of the genre. You'll remember that we spoke of the murders in the Rue Morgue in our episode about Edgar Allan Poe as being a seminal piece in the beginnings of detective fiction. And not too far behind, we find closed room mysteries being a key component in many of the Golden Age favorites. So let's take a look at each one of them separately in order to understand their differences and similarities. The locked room mystery is a term used to describe a story in which a crime takes place in a literal locked setting, making the committal of the crime seem impossible. It typically involves fewer characters, perhaps just the victim, the killer, and a patsy. These puzzle stories are often how done its rather than who done its because the sleuth has a good idea who the murderer is, but must prove how the killer managed it in order to ascertain guilt. Other names for this type of mystery is an impossible crime or a miracle problem. The term miracle problem is the idea that there is no earthly way for the crime to have been committed. This opens up the possibility for characters in the story to suspect a spiritual or supernatural explanation for the crime, until the savvy sleuth comes in to crack the case, that is. The sister trope of closed circle mystery, on the other hand, includes a number of people isolated together when the crime occurs in their midst. They are somehow cut off from the rest of the world, perhaps by an avalanche, a plane crash, or being stuck on an island together. It becomes clear very quickly that one of them must be the perpetrator. No doubt, many Agatha Christie novels are springing to mind. That's because this was a very popular setup in the golden age of mystery and heavily used by Christie and other writers of the time. And so... We have locked room mysteries in which a crime takes place in a closed location and a closed circle mystery involving a limited number of suspects confined together. Confusing, right? For me, examples really help. I've already mentioned the murders in the Rue Morgue as a great example of a locked room mystery. In it, two horrific murders are committed in a locked bedroom on the fourth floor of a Paris home. It seems completely impossible that a murderer could have gotten in and gotten out because the doors are locked from the inside. Another early example is A Terribly Strange Bed by Wilkie Collins, where an English visitor to a gambling house in Paris stays overnight in the building and is nearly killed by a specially constructed bed. For examples of closed circle mysteries, we must look no further than Dame Agatha herself. Whether a train car in Murder on the Orient Express, a creepy house on a private island in And Then There Were None, or a Nile cruise in Death on the Nile, the Queen of Crime knew how to put together an interesting cast of characters, isolate them, have a body drop, and let the fun begin. It's easy to see why these two related tropes get confused, and also why the catchier term, locked room, has become shorthand for both styles of story. And maybe in the end, it's all just semantics and we should simply enjoy the stories. But this is what we'll discuss together next. Great. Thanks for that introduction, Brooke. Yeah, there's there's definitely some some overlap. I really love that analogy of of um, two sisters who get who who get mixed up. When you were when you were researching this, did you come across sort of anything about why they are so often confused for each other or or, or referred to together? Well, I think it's just a lot because of the similarities, and also because when that they were both popular kind of rose in popularity at the same time. Um, and they do, like you said, they do have a lot of similarities. I all, I actually think another one of 
your great Venn diagrams might be in order once we discuss this, because there are a lot of things that are the same. And, um, and I also find that sometimes in a closed circle mystery, where of course, sometimes there's multiple murders that happen, there's sometimes a series of locked room mysteries within the closed circle mystery, making it even more complicated. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll give some thought to a Venn diagram about these. I think, <laughs> I think that might help um, figure out where the differences are. Um, I, so you mentioned uh, A Terribly Strange Bed. I read that um, to prepare for, for this episode. Um, and I, I thought it was, I actually really enjoyed it. But I, I found it interesting that, and maybe it was just the way that I was uh, researching, I couldn't find a lot of examples of modern or more recently published locked room mysteries. Um, did you did you find any that were that were more recent? Because, like you said, that you know, um, really popular in the kind of golden age of crime and and before that. But did you find any that were more modern? No, and oddly enough, it's it's kind of what we're saying. Like now, if you look up locked room mystery, you're going to find, for instance, um, Ruth Ware writes a lot of uh, like we just recently discussed the woman in cabin 10 one by one is a group of people cut off by an avalanche um, in a dark dark wood she's confined to a home but there again we're they're referring to them as the, that catchier locked room but in a sense if you look at the true definition they're probably more closed circle mysteries um, so I think that maybe we're dealing with just a um, a, a, an issue of semantics where kind of the definition of that term has morphed to um, incorporate both kinds. Mm. I can definitely think of modern day or more recent releases that are the closed circle type, right? Um, uh, Lucy Foley's books, The Hunting Party and The Guest List are both a group of friends go to a remote location and then, and then there's, um, you know, a couple of deaths, one or two deaths. Uh, and it's got to be someone in that, in that group of friends who, who did it right. I could, I can think of some TV episodes that mm -hmm. are locked room um, I think Death in Paradise has a lot of episodes that are locked room style murders. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure there's some other examples of television programs that, um, that, you know, use that trope as the, as the mystery. And I wonder why we see more of that in, on screen than we, than we do in the books that are being released now. It dawned on me in this exact same way that I see those stories, the locked room, you know, um, for instance, the person gets on the elevator, the doors close, and when it shows up on the next floor, they're dead. And um, I think that they are uh, stories that are easy to translate visually, and maybe they're harder to tell. Um, it's also, I think, maybe our um, contemporary reading preferences, because they are such a puzzle mystery. Um, you know, the mysterious affair at Styles is a locked room mystery. And sometimes those puzzle mystery stories when reading are very, um, you know, intricate and didactic and you kind of have to follow along. There may not be a lot of dialogue. It's, it's difficult to portray visually, I think. And our, our, um, tastes in reading maybe have changed to where we want more of that interaction between people. I don't know. That's just a theory. Yeah. I, I wondered the same thing, if it was just a, a, a shift in kind of reader preference. I did read a number of um, locked room short stories. There, yeah, there's definitely uh, more of those stories even that I read that were written by um, authors writing 50 years ago, 70 years ago, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I wonder if you're right, if it's, um, partly a, a shift just in terms of what the, what readers are, um, preferring to, to pick up. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's just reflected in, in what gets written and what gets published. I learned through my research that um, the critics consider the master of the locked room mystery, John Dixon Carr, who wrote apparently a one after another of these stories in the 1930s and 1940s. And um, so that's something that's I've put on my list to, to look into. And uh, as an interesting side note, he is one of only two Americans to have been inducted into the prestigious detection club. So he definitely did a good job with those locked room mysteries. Yeah, I read uh, one of his short stories um, to prepare for this, and I definitely want to read uh, a couple more because you know I thought I thought it was was quite good. Um, there is you know uh, some some of the Sherlock Holmes stories are locked room puzzles that you know he comes up with the with the brilliant solution. And you mentioned Agatha Christie, so you know several of her novels, but also. Uh, she wrote some short stories that were that were locked room puzzles, and uh, they're great as well. I read um, the Mystery of the Yellow Room by Gaston Leroux, who um, so he wrote the Phantom of the Opera as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the the uh, Mystery of the Yellow Room. I think that was before, um, or that was written and published before um, uh, Phantom of the Opera, which. I might actually check out that book, the the Phantom of the Opera, because apparently it's it is you know different than the Andrew Lloyd Webber um, uh, musical that most people would be would be mm-hmm. familiar with. Um, anyway, it it was uh, that was an interesting um, an interesting book to read, uh, and definitely one that I would I would put in the um, the locked room um, the locked room category. Another point I wanted to bring up today about the differences between the two is that in the closed circle mystery, there's a lot of high emotion in the characters. There's a lot of suspense and fear and tension, so it's a high emotion story. And in the locked room, it's usually not very emotional, a pretty low emotion story. Um, The it's a lot of times post crime, like we don't see what see the the crime or aren't in fear of another crime happening and uh, which is pretty typical of those puzzle stories, right? It's more intellectual, the sleuths going through and looking at the, at the clues. And so we have the, maybe that's another way to um, differentiate a story is, is there, is there a lot of suspense or is, is it more of like a detection story? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great um, observation, Brooke, because yeah, you know, when I think about reading, even reading, um, and then there were none. That is very suspenseful, right? Like, who's going to be next? Who's doing this? Um, same thing when uh, we, you know, read um, uh, the woman in, in cabin ten or uh, Lucy Foley's books. It's very, you know, like who's who's telling the truth here? Everybody has yeah. secrets, but they're not necessarily secrets that. Um, have led to the murder, right? But you have to kind of figure out, okay, which which is the most relevant. Um, whereas, yeah, the with the locked room, the 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 murder has happened, um, and it's it's less suspenseful and more observations that mm-hmm. the, the the detective is is making. Um, and I would say it is also um, that there's a detective, right? I mean several of the other books that we've been talking about, uh, it's not a not necessarily a police investigation that's happening. It's True. it's, you know, just a a regular person who's trying to figure out what's going on. In the other examples, it's a detective that is um doing the investigation. So I wonder if if that kind of contributes to some mm-hmm. of the uh difference between those those types of stories. I think it definitely does. Um, and I have a true confession to make. It's true confession time, Sarah. Until this week, I had never read and then there were none. I had, I know, I know. I had watched movies, you know, seen film adaptations. And so I could just kind of felt like, oh yeah. I mean, and I loved it. Don't get me wrong. But I thought, okay, this is the right time. This is the right time. And it was so good. It was just fantastic as I knew it would be, right? But that's where the uh, the notion came that it's, it is sort of locked room within 
closed circle. I mean, she, it's so masterful as anyone who has read it or seen it knows. Um, but yeah, I like that, that comparison or that point that you made that there's no detective in this story. It's just the people that are put in the situation. Um, and that's as many as I can think of, that's kind of the case for a closed room. So I like that as another way to, it's another point for our Venn diagram. Yeah. I'm just writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a preference, Brooke, for if you were, you know, if you had an option of reading a uh, closed circle or a locked room mystery, do you think there's one that you would choose over the other? I really like the, I like the closed circle concept, you know, um, I love the personal interactions, you know, and you want to know, you know, who maybe has a secret alliance or who's telling the, the truth and who's, um, you know, I really, really enjoy that. But, you know, if you want to throw in some of those other elements, I'm all for it. What about you? Yeah, I think I'm the same. I think I, I enjoy reading the locked room mysteries, but sometimes the solutions are a little far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the closed circle, um, I don't find that. I, you know, maybe the reason behind the murder is uh, a little bit like I'm not sure that that would bring me to to um, to kill someone, but. Um, <laughs> uh, the, you know, the method isn't, isn't often as convoluted as it sometimes seems in, um, in some of the locked room mysteries that I've read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, well, you know, I don't, I think we're in good company and the closed circle mystery got so popular, um, in the 1930s and forties. And it's actually the reason, not surprising, where the game Clue or Cluedo uh, came from. I looked into this and Anthony Pratt is the inventor. Um, he's a Brit who in 19, I believe 43 actually invented the game while he was holed up in his home during the air raids of World War II. And largely because of everyone's love for reading Christie novels. And he was like, well, it would be really fun to like play this game. And so he created it. And in 1944, it um, was released in the UK. And then in 1947, and of course in, in the UK, it's Cluedo. And in 47, it became Clue in the US. And I know it's still one of the family favorite board games at my house. Oh, here too. I actually have two versions of it. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> so, Sarah, do you play Clue or Cluedo in Canada? Uh, Clue, I think, are both of my versions. Um, yeah, it's known as Clue here. Yeah. I would love to get my hands on one of the earlier editions that Anthony Pratt made because some of the weapons included a syringe, a bomb, a walking stick, a fireplace poker. Yeah, really fun murder weapons there in the original version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's such a great, a, a great piece of uh, mystery trivia, uh, Brooke. I love it. And I think it's fun. You know, lately at, at this recording, it's fall of 2022, and we've seen kind of a resurgence of especially mystery film. And there's a great release coming up next called The Invitation. In fact, it may have already been released at this recording where um, it is a closed circle mystery. Um, a, a number of people get invited to, to uh, come to a swanky party at a house. And when they get there, it's not at all what they expected. So I was really happy to see that and know that this, um, you know, this trope is still popular. We still, we still love to, to watch that story play out. Yeah, excellent. Oh, the, that your comment makes me think of um, *Knives Out*, which yes. you know I think is a, a good example of that. Um, it's actually a combination because the, the, um, there is a detective who comes to to figure it mm -hmm. out, um, but it's definitely a, a closed circle. Um, and I can't remember—is it a locked room as well? 
I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. It's like the, it's the culmination of it all. Great yeah. reference, Sarah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to rewatch it because the then um they just announced the release date for the second um Knives Out movie, right? I oh, think that's great. In. Brooke, I think this was a, a really great conversation and I think there's some really great books and stories for people to check out if they're interested in either locked room or closed circle mysteries, or uh, you know, if they can find something that is a, a combination of the two and, and kind of get the best of of both of those great uh, subgenres. Absolutely. And we will include some links to some articles that I referenced and resources if you're interested in learning more. But for today, thank you so much for joining us on Clued in Mystery. I'm Brooke. And I'm Sarah. And we both love mystery. Clued in Mystery is produced by Brooke Peterson and Sarah M. Stephen. Music is by Shane Ivers at silvermansound.com. Visit us online at cluedinmystery.com or social media at cluedinmystery. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing, leaving a review, or telling your friends.